Hello everyone and welcome back to Passion Sundays, the best way to end the week and start another. Our guest today is a phenomenally passionate woman, the first Saudi woman to climb Everest and she's got a lot more passion to share with us. Raha Muharraq. Hey. Raha, thank you very much for being with us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. It's an amazing experience to meet passionate people, but when somebody as passionate as you challenges the norms of a country like yours being in Saudi and the culture, and then also takes that passion to the extreme of climbing an Everest, all in one go, that's a lot of passion. So tell me more. I think uh, everyone asks me when did it start, how did it start. It, it never really started. I've always been this kind of passionately curious person. I've always wanted to try new things. I've always been sporty and outgoing. So it, it never really started. I've always been passionate. So I think it, it, it peel away all of the, uh, the terms and the things I've done, the core base is passion because I, I'm so passionate about trying new things and exploring the world. So when you say passion, what do you define passion as? Uh, passion is very difficult, very difficult to define, but it's so it's so it's so strong when you feel it. But it's very hard to put in words. But for me, it's it's doing what you love, doing what you love, even if it's difficult and still enjoying it. You know what I mean? It's uh, in my case, it's being cold, hungry, extremely tired, and stinky in the middle of nowhere in Antarctica and having a smile on your face because you're passionate for that, for the love of the mountains. Passion can be that. Passion can be uh, when I play volleyball and it's, it's the camaraderie with my friends. It's, it's just, it, 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 passion shows in so many different forms and so many different colors. It's very hard to define. Amazing. So, so that undefined passion sounds easy. It's something that you it feel. Sounds easy, but it's sounds not easy. really. So obviously not, not when you're up at, I don't know, almost 30,000 feet and, and you're kind of trekking your, your, your and, miserable. and miserable and then you're thinking, why am I doing this in the first place? How do you find passion in such tough moments? I remind myself, I don't usually forget, but when I do, if I'm very tired or very aggravated or frustrated, I remind myself that this is something that a few people would even dream of. I'm doing something that few people would even have the courage to dream of, let alone achieve and live. So I'm living this, this thing, I should take it with all its beauty and all its difficulties and just uh, embrace it. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And uh, it, it's, it's one of those things that it's very difficult and very hard, but you love it so much, so it doesn't matter. So that's all beautiful. And again, you know, all the respect to you with the amazing work you've done with, uh, you know, climbing and Everest and, and following your passion. But there was a bigger mountain to climb before you even got to Everest, and that's the cultural climb that you had to, to break through. In many ways, it was much more demanding and much more difficult than the, the, than the physical climb because I come from a culture that has specific ideas and, 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 I, and definitions and lines and borders and boxes, whatever you call them. I come from that culture and I respect it and I understand that's, that's, that's the, my cultural background, but everything evolves. Everything in life evolves. And for you, in order for you to survive, you need to be able to evolve and change. So the biggest hurdle was getting my family on board and 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 my, they don't understand. I, I want to say understand, but they don't understand. To get my family to accept that this is what I love, even if they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things once, my dad said, he was watching a video of one of my climbs and it was windy and I was tired and you could see my face, the pain, yeah? He saw this video and when he was done, he had like teary eyes and he looked at me and he said, I don't understand why you do this to yourself, but I understand that you need to. So this is the kind of thing that I had to build and I had to introduce to my family because in the beginning they were like, Mount climbing mountains, what? Let alone the biggest ones later in my climbing career. I love it. I mean, obviously, you started with the hardest, and you worked your way down. People no, do it the other no, way. I People did, do it the actually, other way around. I did. Eight, I did eight mountains before Everest. Everest was number nine. Okay. So I, I, I did my due diligence. So, do you ever doubt that this is your passion? Because a lot of times people get excited with big achievements. So I'm sure you know conquering and breaking through the cultural stigma, and then conquering an Everest. Once you do that, a lot of people say, and that's what, what I call the Tiger Woods syndrome. You know, he got so high that suddenly there was nothing higher to go above and, and the energy dies off. And that person is a shadow of who he was before. How do you deal with that? The trick is, is not to hang your, your, your passion and your, your, your goals on one big thing, one, actual, one big uh, act. The trick is to love something not 
to love a goal and mm -hmm. that's it. Because when you reach a goal, I love mountains, I love the outdoors, I love climbing. I don't love Everest, okay. that mountain. It's that. just called Everest. So the, it's the, the, you have to fall in love with the act of doing something, with the process, not just the finish line. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I guarantee you Olympic gold medals winners don't love the actual piece of metal. Mm -hmm. They love being recognized for the sport they do and the time they put in. The medal represents all the hard work and all of the years they've done. So you shouldn't hang it on a on something that you can frame and put it on the wall and that's it. And pe people ask me what's next since you climbed the highest mountain in the world. They think that I'm done. No, it, it goes, this, you know, uh, pun intended, the sky's the limit from there, right? Yeah, agreed. And I know, I know you and me share, share probably a similar passion, which is going to space. So you want to climb probably Monday, a mountain yeah. up in space. I want to deliver an inspirational talk from space. So maybe we'll go to it together. Raha, this has been a phenomenally amazing interview. Pleasure. And I thank you for all the passion because what our viewers don't know is actually it's your birthday. So I want to say yes, a very happy birthday. <laughs> so this is how passionate she is. She comes on her birthday to do a Passion Sunday interview. Because I promise you, if I'm here, I'll do it. You see, that's commitment and that's true passion so Raha thank you very much for being Thanks with for us today me. I love it I appreciate it passion <laughs> what do you think I would really love to hear your opinion so write your comments on the blog below and share it with your friends if you found it useful and if you'd like more tools tips techniques and exclusive interviews that I only share on my website go to mustafa.com and until next episode live passionately <laughs>